Right now, when we look at the Middle East, uh, we see a lot of conflicts everywhere. But right now, the most important one seems to be the Syria. So first, we need um, a solution on Syria. And right now, I also see Melis ask the question about how to solve Syrian conflict. Uh, Turkey can uh, lead, along with NATO, a force of powers, a benign force of powers, to enter uh, to stop this bloodshed in Syria because. Uh, a peace force, for example, consisting of Muslim countries can be established to intervene in Syria. We have different oppositional groups uh, which are fighting with uh, Assad, uh, and, uh, and neither of these groups uh, um, seems to be uh, uh, capable of winning the, the battle, and uh, neither Assad or neither the opposition group seems to be willing to, to, to surrender anytime soon. Uh, when there is a stalemate between Russia and the United States for the last three years in the UN Security Council, we have seen that uh, uh, three times uh, Russia has vetoed the, the, uh, the resolutions. So I think uh, 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 if we want to resolve the crisis in Syria, we have to bring all these actors. I can say that Syria has become uh, uh, one of, for our generation, is really one of the biggest, the largest, uh, you can say, uh, proxy battleground, regional and international proxy battleground. Uh, and that highlights the complexity of the resolving the crisis in Syria. So we I saw a question here. Uh, a person is asking how many refugees did Canada and America commit to taking. America commit to, committed to taking none, but they got, I think, 35 refugees so far only out of six plus million refugees inside and outside Syria. Uh, Canada committed to taking 1,500 refugees only if they are airlifted to Canada. Uh, right, I, I agree. I think uh, there are also two obstacles for the United Nations. Uh, first of one is, uh, I think, the accessibility to some areas uh, inside Syria. And the second reason, I think, it's uh, uh, insufficient uh, donations. Uh, point out to one fact. What Middle East is now missing is a union of its own. For example, we have European Union, we have ALBA in uh, America, we have other unions, we have Shanghai Cooperation Organization, before that we had other unions. Uh, but there is no Muslim Union in, in the Middle East right now. Muslim countries need to uh, come together and establish a European Union style union so that they will be able to travel freely to each other, which will also um, solve the problem of refugees and problem of people settling in cities. For example, when you look at Lebanon right now, there are uh, Palestinian refugees living there for more than 60 years now. 60 years, they have been refugees. They didn't get um, citizenship. They are not settled there. So these people need to be provided a home. Uh, I think uh, it's a good question. Man, well, many experts believe really it's uh, uh, the, the, the Middle Eastern countries, you can say, they they are drenched into mountains of, of hypocrisy. Uh, they, they, are, they have different public statements than really what is going on behind the, uh, the scene. But uh, when it comes to Syria, uh, you know, we have to understand when there is a civil war in a country, uh, the, the, the concept of political opportunism comes up uh, and different countries, particularly regional countries, try to direct the civil war inside the country or try to direct the political process inside that uh, civil war inflicted country to their own in, uh, national interest. The problem is bigger than this. You know? They have to, many of these countries, when we look at these countries, for example in Egypt, more than 50% of the women are illiterate. These women bring up children uh, and these children you know, learn religion from their mothers. And their mothers don't even know how to read. She didn't even read Quran. She doesn't know her own religion. But she said she's a Muslim. She learns religion uh, from a person who is telling her, a scholar. And if that scholar is a bigoted person, you cannot prove it if you're illiterate. You cannot read your own Quran. So uh, education is the key factor to bring these countries to more, much more, uh, to a much more civilized pattern, of course.